essentially there's a teaching in Christianity today that's popular that teaches that the Jewish people of the of the first century believed that God expected them to keep every single commandment of the Torah and to do it perfectly. Of course, within this same argument within Christianity um, about keeping the Torah and keeping all of the Torah and keeping it perfectly, the point is brought up that, number one, no one can keep all of the Torah, and number two, no one can keep it perfectly. Therefore, since it is an impossible endeavor, then the the, the, the reason, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the only conclusion that a person can find themselves in is to give up trying to keep the Torah at all, since no one can keep it all and no one can keep it perfectly. The only, the only solution is to give up on that and to throw your hands up in desperation, crying out for mercy to God, in which case God will um, open your eyes to understand that only the Messiah can bring you into a righteous relationship with, with, with himself, uh, namely bring you into a saving relationship. However, if you've been following along with me for any length of time, uh, then you know by now that I don't follow that line of thinking. I don't believe that A, Paul thought that the Jewish people of his day were interpreting the Torah in such a way as to believe that they had to keep every single commandment. And number two, they were not interpreting the Torah in such a way as to believe that not only did they have to keep every single commandment, but they had to keep every part of it perfectly, blamelessly, without sin. However, how then do I explain this phrase, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law? Let's read my commentary. The phrase, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law, end quote, is of course lifted from Deuteronomy 27.26. Of course, that's indicated by the familiar, for it is written, that Paul says. One of the keys, I believe, to correctly understanding the verse from Deuteronomy, and thus Paul's use of it here in Galatians, is in understanding that, quote, everything written in the book, end quote, also, indeed, primarily includes faith in Yeshua as the promised Messiah. Now, I have to pause for a moment and let that part sink in. So, uh, faith in Messiah is one of the things written in the book of the law, in my understanding of the book of the law. For indeed, Knowing, knowing this from 21st century hindsight, Yeshua is the very conclusion, the very goal that everything written in the book is pointing to. For instance, if you read Romans 10.4 in Paul, which is uh, from the KJV, is something like, for the Christ is the end of the law for everyone who believes under righteousness, or something to that effect. If we take the word end there in that verse where it says Christ at the end of the law, and we translate it as not cessation like some commentaries do, but instead translate it as the goal or the uh, purpose, uh, the intended destination, uh, uh, working from that Greek word telos, then we can say that, like David Stern's translation, this is the complete Jewish Bible, as well as I think the Tree of Life version, uh, Christ is the goal of the law. Christ is the purpose of the law. Christ is the end point of the law. Christ is the destination of the law. He's not the cessation of the law. He's the point at which the law arrives. He's the um, destination at which the law uh, takes us to, as if the law were a highway, a journey, a pathway that's leading us somewhere, and Christ is that destination. Therefore, we can say he is the goal of the law. He's the end, to use the English word that's so popular in many versions. God is not asking his followers uh, to try to keep every commandment in the law as some sort of simplistic grocery list of do's and don'ts in order to avoid being cursed for lack of perfection. A good section of the Torah is given over to what to do when you sin, not what to do uh, because you're sinless. So the Torah is not written with any with the mindset of a sinless people in mind. God didn't give the Torah to a people with the ex expectation that they would not sin. In fact, it's quite the opposite. God knew over and over that we would sin and therefore that we would need a remedy to to uh, uh, come back from that state that status of unrighteous of um, sinner. So. That's really one of the central reasons why the theology that teaches that um, the Torah is teaching sinless perfection cannot stand. Just read through the Torah and you'll understand that.